Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to Inglebard Gaming. Yeah, I've been on a bit of a Contra kick lately. This will be the last video on Contra for a while, I promise. Next week, it's back to the Shining Force Retrospector. Anyway, to the task at hand. In today's episode of Complete Trash, the series in which I play a bad game through from start to finish with commentary, I'll be telling you all about Contra Force on the NES. You may think Contra Force was an ill-conceived Contra game that should have never been released. Well, you're wrong! Turns out it was just an ill-conceived game in general that should not have been released. You see, originally it wasn't a Contra game at all. It was under development in 1991 for the Famicom under the title of Arc Hound. Konami crammed this game into the Contra brand and farted it out in America in October of 1992, seven months after Contra 3 The Alien Wars hit SNES in this country. And in Japan? Well, Konami didn't bother releasing Contra Force there at all, which probably tells you all you need to know about the quality of this title. As for recording methodology, I used a few safe states here and there to keep this video as mercifully short as I could while still showing you the entire game. Contra Force feels really difficult when you start, but with practice it becomes very easy, and I only used a few save states. Alright, enough background, let's get on with it. And so Krappenfest begins! Yes, when you look at the title screen you see that familiar Contra logo and it may seem everything is alright, but then you see this opening cutscene. Could you even tell that thing was a phone on a desk? Normally I don't show these cutscenes, but I'm making an exception here, because I want you to see how slow this text is. And keep in mind, when you see the in-game cutscenes, they work just like this, the text is just as slow, and for the in-game cutscenes, you cannot skip them or speed them up in any way. Uh, they only occur between levels, so they're not that horrendous, I guess? But, I mean, they add nothing to this. You guys know how I feel about story scenes in action games in general, if you've been, you know, watching the channel for a while. And I found this game infuriating for that reason alone. Now when you start, you've got your choice of four characters, and they all have different weapon loadouts. And then, just look at this game. I mean, you can tell this is not Contra. Your weapon just fires a couple of little shots, and uh, that's it. You've got a Gradius-like slash Gradius-like power meter at the bottom of the screen, and you pick up suitcases, and you buy your power-ups a la the Gradius and Life Force games. And in this game, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, and it doesn't just work at all. And you see that sort of thing that would be normally like a mini-boss in the early Contra games, that construction thing? Well, you know, in this game, you just gotta run past it. You can't fight it, there's nothing to shoot, you just go on. And the weapon I've got here now, this sort of machine gun, I don't even know what the weapons are called, but anyway, <laughs> this is already the best weapon in the whole game for anybody. It shoots the fastest, and uh, frankly, none of the other things are worth even trying. Now on the power-up bar on the bottom, uh, when we get TI, which you see is the fourth slot there, that'll give you a third shot of whatever weapon you have. Every weapon can only fire two shots at a time until you get that. Then each weapon can fire three. Uh, except, I think, the flamethrower. But it's been a while since I used that in this game, so don't hold me to that one. And uh, you won't see the flamethrower here, because this character doesn't have access to the flamethrower. I'll talk about what's in that final power-up slot a little later. And the, you know, the graphics themselves, like the backgrounds, they're alright. I mean, they're not top of the line or anything. They're not terrible. And I will say, I think the music in this game, while it's not super memorable or anything, is actually pretty well done, and is on par with some of Konami's better stuff. I mean, we don't have the catchiness of things like uh, we hear in the real Contra games, or Gradius and Life Force games, but it's alright. Now look at this. You've got fans on the bottom, you've got to jump at just the right height, or you will smash into those spikes. And there's a pro tip if you ever play this game yourself. Those landmines that are on the ground, you die if you step on them, but you can shoot them away, so that's what you want to do. And for these boxes that you see fall around, these giant crates, there can only be one on the screen at one time. So if you're in an area where there's multiple of, you know, those drop zones for them, you know, if you play your cards right and be observant, you can manage to not have to deal with the crates basically at all. 
And no sorry, Bob, this is not frustrating, being on this incredibly slow-moving thing that just crawls across that rail. And you can see, the collision detection in Contra Force is also super weird. And that's both between your character in the background, your character and other sprites like platforms, and also your character and any of the enemies. There's like a delayed reaction for when your bullets hit the enemies before they actually die. Uh, or from the time your bullets hit objects and they actually explode. Just nothing feels right in this. It is very stiff, has sort of a very wooden feel, and it is not pleasant in any way, and it does not in any way, shape, or form feel like the other 8-bit Contra titles. Now you would get a vastly better Contra experience by playing either Operation C on the Game Boy, uh, that's an original Game Boy, or even, you know, just Contra the Alien Wars on the original Game Boy. Now, is this better than Contra Advance the Alien Wars EX on the Game Boy Advance that we saw last time? Eh, it's, it's a tough call. Here's one of our bosses. Almost all the bosses in this game, there's one exception, are just gigantic humans. Why are we fighting? Someone who's either a cowboy or an Australian? I'm not quite sure. He's with the bad guys, that's all you need to know. And another thing I should point out here is this game is just incredibly poorly programmed. Whenever you fire a shot on the screen, the entire game enters a state of slowdown. Literally, one bullet is enough to do it. And here's one of these lovely, unskippable cutscenes. And you'll see it's incredibly compelling. You see a tiny little portrait of your guy, you'll see a tiny little portrait of some other guy, and they just talk very, very slowly at each other with a plot that no one could possibly care about. Birds, I'm warning you, if your boss's life is important, you better not leave. Ha, 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 um. <laughs> I mean, what, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, anyway, so this does, much like uh, Super Contra slash Super C, include overhead levels. These overhead levels are not any better than the side-scrolling levels. You don't have to quite worry about collision detection as much, since there's no jumping and no platforming in this section, uh, but it is still not good. Everything still feels incredibly janky, and it seems like maybe it doesn't slow down quite quite as much, uh, but it's noticeable. I mean, look how slow <laughs> the animation happened when I shot those bad guys and they died. As far as level design, you know, it's a little strange. You're just walking on bridges between multiple ships in a dock, and <laughs> it's not... <laughs> Anything you would expect to see in real life. Uh, another thing I'll point out here is just plot-wise, this is pretty much the only Contra game, official Contra game, that doesn't have anything to do with aliens. No aliens make an appearance in any way, shape, or form in this game. You're just fighting a bunch of super large human guys. Maybe they're wearing a disguise to look like human guys, but they're not a man, they're chicken boo. Who knows? And yeah, just everything in here is so dull. You can see there's giant gaps where there's no enemies at all. And in this section, you can walk around and blow up, like, I don't know, a third of these planes. Some you can shoot, some you can't. And then you can get on any one of these boats and it'll take you to the next section, which will lead you to the boss. You can see I've got the third power-up now. I mean the fourth power-up, because I can shoot three bullets at a time instead of two. Aren't we fancy? Let's pop into this submarine. And hey, look, that's not the boss yet, it's just some really huge guy. But when you think about it, who can really say? Maybe it's not that these boss humans are so gigantic, maybe it's just that all of the humans in the game besides them are pygmies. That just might be it. But, I mean, our hero is undoubtedly cool. I mean, just look at him with his backwards baseball cap. What more could you ask for? 
It's the pinnacle of the 90s. And here is our boss fight. Check out the face on this guy here. <laughs> I mean, come on. What were they thinking? And yeah, it's about as fun as it looks. You know, you have almost no risk of dying. You just have to carefully position yourself on either the tile on the left in this opening, or the tile on the right. There's your only chance at dying when he shoots uh, with his left arm, you know, down that side there. Um, but, you know, or you don't have to worry, he's already dead. There's another giant chungus of an enemy taken care of. Which leads us to our next cutscene. And, oh man, I just found these torture <laughs> I just, how do they not have it so you can hit start to skip these things? They can't seriously think anybody would care about reading these. Alright, so, here is our second side-scrolling level, level 3. And this level is about as Uncontra-like as you can possibly get. And what do I mean by that? It's a maze! And there are incredibly slow-moving platforms you've got to stand on, and there are jumps you've got to make where if you fall, you could land back as far as the beginning of the level for a, a pretty decent way into it, where you just have to redo all the platforming that you missed. And another thing that really goes towards just how badly, you know, this game was designed and programmed, anytime you get a sprite off the screen, if you move back to the position where the sprite should be, it respawns. This includes enemies, this includes platforms, this includes various crates and things like that. So if you want to abuse the power-up system, if you found a place where there's a crate, you know, you can just keep going back and forth until you get the suitcase drops that you need. Oh, and you can see now that I've got the final power-up active. It's sort of a shield, but it's only uh, while you're flipping. And here's about the most unintuitive thing ever. I had to shoot that thing to uh, bounce myself up off that weird little scale type thing, a la Sonic the Hedgehog. Why is a thing like that in a Contra game? Who knows? Or we can go with the other answer. It's not really a Contra game. And yeah, you've got to grab this hook, and it's not easy, and you keep just sliding across it. And then we've got tons more platforming where you can fall a long way and lose a lot of progress and have to do things completely over. I mean, there's just so, so much here that could have and should have been done differently. I mean, I don't know, you know, if they had a, a certain restricted time frame on getting this project out. I mean, it's possible since it came after 16-bit titles, you know, and the 16-bit consoles have been around for a while. But, I don't know. I, I just feel like you can't really excuse it too much. I mean, because in a worst-case scenario, why couldn't this team, you know, have used the Contra engine and then just made modifications to make the levels the way they wanted? Why do we get this junk? This buggy, glitchy, slow junk? <laughs> There's also a ton of flicker in different parts. And uh, you'll see some of it in a little bit here. There hasn't been too much yet the way I've played this thing. And now we're coming up to the game's only boss that is not a big guy. It's an actual vehicle. And it's a funny boss fight because you could literally end up doing this thing forever because um, you have to destroy certain parts of it. And it doesn't tell you that. There's nothing that points out that these are its weak points. Nope, you could just be blasting away at a part of the uh, ship where it gives you like an audio cue that you're actually doing damage, but you're not really doing any damage. So the things you have to destroy are those four like laser guns with the two mounted on each side. You may have to destroy the gun in the middle, I'm not sure. I've never tried it without doing that. So if you know for sure, feel free to post about that in the comments. But what I was talking about here, in an earlier playthrough while I was practicing and getting ready for this run, I was shooting at the center just to see if it would ever blow up, and I just kept shooting and shooting and shooting at the middle of the ship, and after several minutes, 
the fight still didn't end. Uh, so I think you only can defeat it by blowing up those four laser cannons. But again, I'm not 100% sure. If there's a fan of this game who can tell me the answer with absolute certainty, feel free to leave that comment and let me know. Sorry that this is so tedious. I'm sorry that Konami decided that they should make this boss have so much energy and that it should take so long to destroy. Because as you can see, I know it's not the most fun thing in the world to watch, and I can also assure you it's not the most fun thing in the world to do either. And at the point that Contra Force came out for the NES, there were just so many better games already available, not only on the NES, but also on much more powerful systems like the Genesis and Super Nintendo. Something like this and the end of 1992 was never going to really fly. And no, the NES was not in its prime anymore at the point that Contra Force came along, so it came at a time when there were not a lot of really great games being put out for the system, because a lot of resources had been primarily moved to other platforms, but still, I mean, there's no excuse, Konami could have done, and should have done, a better job making this game. It's another fantastic cutscene. Remember, your destiny will be played out in this town. Ha ha ha, I know. Where you are. <laughs> you can't even tell who's talking. You've got to take the context from the line you're reading, because sometimes... Part of a line is from one guy, and part of a line is from the other. And here we go, we start stage four, which is our second and final overhead stage, on the, the wing of a plane that's already flying. Now, as a concept, it's not a terrible idea for a level. Except for what they do with it, which we'll see in just a minute or so here. But yeah, even when they load the screen with enemies... You know, they stop, they don't shoot very quickly. You do have some stationary weapons, like those guns that are firing. And then this is kind of maze-like. You can wander around this thing, looking for the right way out, and it's pretty frustrating. There is a tiny little door uh, that leads to the other wing, and you have to keep going north, or just up in this. And you'll see me go back and forth sometimes, because I couldn't remember if there were enemies in certain places, and I wanted to make sure they were cleared out and weren't going to shoot me, or just toddle in from off-screen and fire away. There's a tiny little black door that you've got to shoot. Very easy to miss that and not see it at all. I remember playing this game for the first time. I couldn't figure out that that thing was a door. I just ran around shooting everything and finally got it. I'm like, oh, okay, I get it. And again, you can see some of that awful collision detection at work. And we've got some lovely instances of flicker with those clouds flying by. And here's this game's crowning uh, action movie style achievement. We're gonna go from one plane to another. Super awesome since we don't have a jump. You've got a split second to run across uh, before the gap gets too big and you fall between the planes. So if you miss it, you're dead. So now we've run from one plane onto another. And we're just gonna keep on doing what we were doing. It's basically the same layout. The enemy placement's a little different. If you need power-ups, you can get them from shooting out these things, and getting your briefcases or whatever they are. Otherwise, it's keep on heading up. Here we go, back into this section again. This time, we've got some tank-like armored vehicles here. <laughs> uh, they look like personnel carriers, but they are armed with very large rocket launchers. And here you'll get some footage of me being not quite sure which way I was supposed to go, which is why I headed left instead of right. I mean, I knew I had to keep going up and going to a place where I could get back onto the wing. I just felt like I was missing something and there was something else I was supposed to do. But nope, I just wasted some time until I then found the door and got to progress. So once we do that, guess what we're going to do next? We're going to keep on going to the top of this wing. And now there are little guns that can pop up out of the ground. Or the wing, I should say. They get a shot off and they go away. Then they come back and do it again. I mean, conceptually, I do think there are some things that are kind of okay about this level. Uh, but just the whole thing of going from ship to ship, you know, from plane to plane, it, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, can you picture something like this going on in real life? All these planes are flying close enough together 
they get so close to each other that their wings just barely miss touching each other and causing a calamity where they're all knocked out of the sky. And then we get these little planes. These are much smaller ones that look like they have no business being in the sky at all. They look like they're maybe from, I don't know, you know, 80 years ago when flight was just kind of getting started. And as you can see from these missiles that fire off screen, there are parts where there is an awful lot of flicker. And yep, we've got to go from one little plane to the next. Now this is just something else that we're going to repeat for a little bit here. And we'll get back to another big plane. Sorry to spoil the surprise. The other annoying thing that I didn't mention on this level is you are constantly pulled to the right. So if you let go of the D-pad and you're not moving, your character is just going to slowly glide to the right a little bit. You know, basically every frame you'll move a pixel or two. So you've got to constantly fight against that for literally the entire level, and I hate it when games do that. It is not fun. I don't know why they thought it was fun. Did anybody try this? So here we are. I think that is our last transfer. And for this last large plane, this will lead to our boss fight. And once again, the boss of this level is just a big guy. You know, all the bosses in this game, except for that one in the last level, are just guys. And it's really weird. Doesn't really exactly capture that Contra spirit, does it? I mean, come on, Konami. Surely there were a few more nods you could have thrown in, even if they were at the last minute. Maybe something approximating a spread gun, even though, with the way this game's engine runs, that might have knocked the entire game down to about a single frame per second. But still, at least it would have felt somewhat like Contra. Take out a couple of turrets, they almost got me there. And here we go, here's our boss fight. It's a pilot armed with a handgun. What a boss. But at least he's about twice our size. And then for no reason, he just kind of flips and rolls down a little bit. But you never have to worry, because as far as I've seen, he stops rolling when he gets to the next height down, and he never goes lower than that. At least, I've never had him survive long enough to get lower than that. And I fought him with a regular gun, not only this quote-unquote powered-up gun. Yeah, there he is. So at that height, I don't think he ever gets lower. But again, if you've played this a lot more than I have, if you have more experience with it and you know what you know, he does, if I have that wrong, feel free to correct me in the comments. I'm not claiming to be an expert on this game. I just know bad games. And this is a bad game. Okay, here is our final cutscene. But how come you could take a strong item like the plutonium? Hey guys, congratulations on your safe return! But time is coming to an end! <laughs> this is some award winning dialogue. The next opponent will be me, the leader of this plan. Wait for me. Alright, we're on to the final level. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of a cool idea with all the windows breaking, and there he is. That's the leader of the enemies. We gotta chase him through this level. You're not gonna see most of this level, because you can do things like shoot the staircase out and then you fall down. You don't fall to your doom. There's more level down there, and you've gotta work your way back up. And it's super tedious and sucks. <laughs> I mean, I experienced that the very... You know, first time I played this, and a few times after, before I figured out, you know, the best way to approach this level and go about it. So here we have more of those chains. And yeah, this is another area where you can fall down a lot and be forced to redo an awful lot of the level if you don't quite nail a jump. It is super aggravating. I mean, these days when I'm playing this game, if that happens, you know... I I'll just save state at the beginning and reset it, so I reload that state, so I don't have to go through all that, because it's not worth it. It's not fun. You will see me take advantage of the flip shield a little bit uh, during the final boss fight, 
wasn't really much reason or cause to use it during the game, but you know, you'll see a, a couple of areas where it is actually useful during the final battle here. And while you haven't seen it in this run, you can get stuck in the scenery very easily in this game. It would not be an uncommon sight to see your character walking, like, in the middle of those bricks. Like a, a full, you know, sprite length down from where he's supposed to be. So here's our final fight. Yep, guy again. Except this time it's guy and helicopter. Mostly guy. And there you can see I'm using the flip uh, to avoid uh, getting hit by some of his bullets that he shoots out. I'll use it to avoid some of the rockets from the helicopter as we go on here. Uh, and another thing that drives me absolutely nuts in this game is that you can't duck. You just crouch on your knees a little bit. And it doesn't get you low enough to avoid almost any enemy fire from standard enemies. Well, luckily, as you can see, you can take out most regular enemies long before they ever get a shot off. Yeah, that feels a lot like Contra, doesn't it? Almost at the end here. And there we are. He's taken out. You just have to avoid another shot or two from the helicopter, which then just explodes for no reason. Perhaps there was something tying its operation into his heartbeat. Or perhaps they were just stupid. And that's it. That is the complete game of Contra Force on the NES. Yeah, naming this thing Contra was not the best idea. It was just something else that tainted the brand. I mean, I do find it kind of funny that a lot of the concepts from this game, having four characters with different weapon loadouts, having much more story in the game, having cutscenes where there's dialogue and everything, all of these things we would see again in Contra Hardcore on the Genesis. And while Contra Hardcore is not my absolute favorite Contra game, as I mentioned, I mean, I like it. it. It's good, it's just not amazing or anything like that. But, I mean, it's a masterpiece compared to this. This game was just absolute garbage. And again, I don't know a lot of the history, you know, of why it ended up this way. I I've seen, you know, some things on its development. Like I said, it did start out as a completely unrelated game, and the Contra name was added later, and then the Japanese release was cancelled. Once Konami really got their arms around the finished product and saw what it was like. About the only positive thing I have to say about this game is the music is pretty good. And frankly, a little bit wasted here. It's not as good as the regular Contra games, but you know, it's good. It's competent, it sounds nice, they use some good samples. It's pretty nice, you know, as far as NES music goes in general. We are almost done with the credits here. The guy standing up front there kind of reminds me of Terry Bogard from Fatal Fury. Second guy there is the guy we were with his backwards hat. Alright, so that's it. Our horrible nightmare is at an end. So to sum up, Contra Force on the NES started as maybe a decent idea for a game, but putting the Contra name on it implied a level of polish, intensity, and quality that just is not there. It's a buggy game, it's riddled with slowdown and terrible collision detection, making it easy to find yourself walking halfway in the middle of floor tiles or just flat out falling through things. The weapons all stink, the unskippable between-level cutscenes feel like they take forever even though they're short, and the levels themselves are just way too long. The last two side-scrolling levels are also just too easy to lose progress on by falling down to earlier or out-of-the-way parts of the level, and then you have to waste all your time navigating to get back to where you were. I mean, this feels more like a beta of a game than a game itself. And what's kind of crazy is, like I said, a lot of these ideas seem to carry over to Contra Hardcore, whether that was intentional or not. Anyway, what do you all think? Was this your first time seeing Contra Force? Does it stray too much from the formula to bear the Contra name? Am I being too tough on it? Tell me all about it in the comments. And that'll do it for this video, my retro gaming friends. If you enjoyed it, please toss it a like and share it online somewhere. 
If you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you'll never miss one of my videos. If you want to support the work that I do here, I would greatly appreciate it, and you can do that at Patreon, Ko-fi, or right here on YouTube through channel memberships, super thanks, and things like that. With that, I'll say thanks for watching, and see me later.